Hi everybody, I'm Cesar West, as David said. Uh, happy to be here speaking specifically around collaboration for Revit. This really is uh, a service. So there's going to be three parts to this presentation. The first part is, of course, we need you folks who are using Revit um, to look at collaboration for Revit. And in this case here, central file technology is at the core of collaboration for Revit. The second part is about how you really communicate within Revit to those other people in Revit outside of your firm, different, uh, different geographic locations, uh, beyond firewalls. And the third part is let's bring in the rest of the project team as it relates to drawings, Microsoft documents, Excel files, and stuff like that. There's a whole team more than just Revit whenever you're doing projects, and whether you're doing BIM or whether you're doing standard project delivery with CAD, the, the third part of this session is really, is really encompassing that whole team environment. So let's kick it off. And central to all this, this is the first part, it's all about accessing the project data. So those folks that are on the call using Revit today, this is all about central file technology that's built into Revit, so leverage your knowledge here. And we're going to get to the other two parts further down the chain. So with Revit, um, we've always had this central file capability, which has been great. And through a local area network or you know, a private, uh, private wide area network, you could use Revit server and Revit to host central files for your team. Now, where we're going with this uh, over the past couple of years, because this has been around for the past couple of years, is that we initiated the idea of BIM living in the cloud. And so this is that central file sitting out in the cloud. And today, uh, Firm A, like I said before, was they could use Revit server, they could use Revit and that central file capabilities, but usually what happened was Firm B could never get access to their uh, central file. So with C, let's call it C for R because it's <laughs> taken up too much bandwidth to be calling it collaboration for Revit. But C for R, the central files and the associated linked Revit files are living in the cloud. And they're not just sitting out in some kind of a cloud um, with loose security. It's tight, tight security, bank level, you know, quality of security, and the cloud site that it lives on is complementary to C4R, and that's called BIM 360T. So what are we really solving here? The whole idea is we're letting that cloud be the central repository, and how were people doing this in the past is actually worthwhile looking at. So let's say two years ago, or even those, those people today that don't know about C4R, if they're doing multi-firm, multi-firm, trying to get past firewalls, concurrent authoring on a central file, this is what they're trying to, this is what they need to do to start concurrent authoring. They would typically buy a hardware, an extra hardware server, they would typically run some Revit server software on that uh, in combination to make the hardware server and Revit server work together properly. They would typically house a VPN connection to make those things work. Now, like I said, there's a bigger team than just the Revit team. So this is where they would also facilitate an FTP or some kind of a cloud storage where, you know, additional project files get saved for the rest of the team to use. There's no viewing capabilities typically through these other FTP and cloud storages, but you know it's just it's it's a storage place, it's a repository. Very basic and elemental. Um, sometimes they would couple with this a hardware accelerator to push the data quicker into the pipe and out of the pipe. And to pull this all together was the IT staff that kind of put their gentle hands around everything and held all that together. And then the project manager down here took a big cup of leap of faith 
and uh, put their project in the hands of all of that. That's what it used to. That's how this used to be done. Now with C4R, C4R, it's basically a service where each of these firms are Revit users. This is a Revit user, another Revit user. You can see this, right? So in total, we have two, four, six, eight Revit users. Each user will have a license of C4R to create data, to author the central file on the project. So that service is licensed to each Revit user, not to each company, but just to the users. Those project managers or architects or engineers that don't get their hands dirty with Revit, and they're, but they're basically overseers, they are directing or managing that project, they need to view drawings or view models. Just viewing does not need a C4R service license, they only need a license of team. BIM 360 team to view, comment, create issues. So there's two different categories of, of licenses that we'll talk about more. But make no mistake, if we had a simple enough project, make no mistake, we could have a single central file on a Revit, on a collaboration for Revit server, and all of these disciplines could work at the exact same time on the exact same file if it's a simple enough project. Bigger projects though, most often this group will have their central file, this group will have their central file, and the linking mechanism will happen in between those firms through collaboration for Revit. It is as real time as you can get. We don't waste a week of uh, design changes to happen uh, to be moving over from one group to another. And this negates IT labor or hardware purchases. Uh, if there's any IT people on the call, I make this joke all the time, but it's it, you know it does resonate to the project managers. There's IT and there's a project manager jumping through some hoops on the old way of doing things. In my mind, IT's investment and time is better spent in in setting up the IT hardware, whereas the C4R really mitigates this person's risk because there's a lot less. Um, lot less areas of where problems can go wrong. And the goal of C4R or our cloud strategy overall, let's just put it as a cloud strategy, is that once it's in the cloud, we want to push more capabilities from an Autodesk standpoint to do things like rendering, energy analysis, CFD, computational fluid dynamics, structural analysis, and so on. The one thing that I will show you though specifically today is once it's in the cloud, how can you leverage these Revit files right here for viewing? So RVT viewing right through the cloud and that's what Teams all about. And here's, uh, you know, I'll put my geek hat, my geek hat on for a second. Uh, here's me with my beautiful brown hair. Um, I have, for example, a Revit file. It's a handsome box, but let's say this handsome box is 100 megabyte in size. Whenever I go to launch this into collaboration for Revit, it officially starts by pushing a full 100 megabytes up to the cloud because it has to register that file into the cloud. It's, it's literally saving and creating a, a Revit file, central file in the cloud. And then in return, it caches the same 100 megabyte file, but it knows now that it is linked into that cloud site. Central files have a tendency to do that. They know where they're located, and that's how uh, the database itself, as a Revit file, uh, allows other people to connect to it and knows when other people connect to it, because it knows where it was born, it knows where it's created, and stays. Now the difference here is that 100 megabytes is the only time which will push a full model up and pull a full model down. And tomorrow, when I go to put the door in the front of my building, this door is very light. It's like a few megabytes big. The delta difference, this delta, this, we'll call it this door, this delta change is only going to be pushed up to the cloud now. Delta 
transfers is what I'm saying this is all about. And this delta transfer happens the same way. So when I push the door up, it goes up to the cloud. And here I've got Dave. He's down here like this. And Dave's the structural engineer. And he does the same thing. He adds a column to his file. And whenever my refresh takes place, my refresh will only download Dave's delta change. Because it knows that I have the complete model, but I'm missing Dave's column. So these delta transfers is very, is very um, uh, it streamlines the transfer. It makes it faster. Uh, but lo and behold, the one thing that most people ask as questions is, am I, am I working live in the cloud? And the answer is no. You're always working on a locally cached file that's on your computer. And this locally cached file can be accessed. It's typically through your uh, user profile. So when you go to your user profile, if you have administrative rights, and if you look under the hidden files, you will actually see uh, it will be an alphanumeric number, but it will be your actually last local save to your hard drive. That's where the local cache is, is kept. And you could actually access that in the event of something catastrophic, catastrophic happening. So you are working local on your computer. So this just kind of reminds me, before I jump into communications, if you have any questions, put them into the questions dialog box uh, in, your, in your window pane, put them into the Q&A side of things, and we'll answer questions at the end of this session here. So enhancing communication, this is part two, and let's face it, those Revit users out there today, we know that Revit is not a chatting mechanism. Uh, you have to use things like Link or uh, Skype or whatever else, even text messaging to chat with anybody in your office or email uh, out people outside of your office to do basic, you know, really, really simple questions, simple Q&As, like a direct chat, for example, uh, my example of the column, like I said, Dave just put that column in, right? And I could use this chat window, which is called the communicator inside of Revit. This is brand new. This is part of c for r um, this could be Dave and I. When we are on the same project, we launch Communicator and we can start chatting. And I can say, hey Dave, where did you put that column? And he can type back, blah, blah, blah. And then he can use this button right here and do a screen, a screen clipping just like that. And he can even send me files. He can say, hey, here's the file that I... Um, Here's the specification on the steel fabricator uh, that's going to be putting in these new um, dovetailed steel columns, which are which do exist, by the way. <laughs> I'm not just throwing out some weird names, but I've seen dovetailed steel columns, uh, which are which are fantastic. Um, but anyways, direct chat, screenshots. Now this last thing down here, this team chat. This is the way that I kind of see this is. If I'm this person right here and these two ladies have been working all week, uh, when I come back into the office, this is a historical record that stays inside of the project, um, the project itself. Anybody who are the team members, so when I log in here, I get to see the historical who said what when. Uh, and this is just incidental uh, changes to plans, drawings, models, and so on. These are not like the major design decisions that some architect's going to make or some engineer's going to make based on the project. This is not the area for that, but it's a great historical perspective. So the other part about communicator is that contextual awareness, who is saving when, who saved when, and who, um, who was successful and who wasn't. And in this light, if you've used Revit server before, um, you may have been successful saving one day, whereas the next day you might be, what's taking so long? Why is this central file taking minutes and minutes to update and save? Um, I don't get it. So in this case here, there might have been a queue of people. When you can't see who's saving right now, Revit will back up the, the people um, in the save to central, and then so they don't damage each other's work. So in this case here, you get to see, oh, Tom's saving right now, 
I will hold off on click save to central. I will save locally first. That's always a good rule of practice, save locally. And then when you see that save to central is complete, then go ahead, click your save to central. It really helps stopping the bottlenecks. It helps to reset our expectations on how long we're actually really saving to central for. So specifically with, um, with this co uh, collaboration for Revit, let me take a look at this entire team. So for the entire team, this is where the service call, this is where, remember I was saying, the central models get saved into the cloud onto this BIM 360 team site. This is actually a service. Let me show you the services that we're really referring to and where we are in the design stages. So this is a timeline. This is an all-encompassing BIM 360 services from Autodesk slide. So if you've ever had to go to autodesk.com and try to make heads or tails what the Autodesk cloud strategy is and what products we have, this slide is it. Okay? You are here at the beginning of a project. You are an architect engineer and you are in the design stages. This is a pre-construction stage. So right from this line, this is contract documents. And before the line, these are more like design docs. Documents, not docs. So you're at the beginning of design, and you know how design goes, right? So you do, these are design changes. You have design change after design change after design change until you start having less design changes, you're coming into construction, design development, construction drawings, right? As you come into construction drawings, you have less and less changes, hopefully. Uh, but then you get up to this line where somebody actually stamps the drawings, and then this drawing set becomes a set of construction, contractual, contractual construction drawings. These con contractual documents start off in a brand new life. The design changes now are a lot less, right? A lot less, a lot less until you start coming into commissioning and handover. This is where team or collaboration for Revit, which includes team, fit. Okay? Into this area right here. You can buy them separately, so you can buy this separately, but it includes team, uh, or you can just buy team. This is where I was saying this would be like the project architect or the project engineer that doesn't touch Revit. This is meant for the Revit people or the AutoCAD people, ACAD. All right. So we're talking about this side of the, of the line today. In future Microsoft webinars, we're going to be talking about things like BIM 360 docs as how it relates to the contractual document and pre-construction construction processes. So this is where we sit today on the left-hand side of that line. So let's finish with connecting the entire team. So with the team, this is that project architect, anybody with ACAD, anybody with Microsoft documents, anything like JPEGs, so on, PDF, right? All of these things. Let's put them on team to share and view. And the nice thing about it, specifically on team, I'm going to highlight three different things here. The live review, you know, this is... There's another product that's out there that does this, this very um, simultaneous review process where you can review a document with other people watching. Well, you know what? Checkmark for us. We have a live review too because when I'm inside of team, uh, when you're inside of team and you open up this model or a set of sheets, you can click on the live, it's called live review as the feature. You click on that live review, it sends a hyperlink to you, 
you send that to Dave, and Dave opens up that link on his iPad or his Android device, and just with that link, Dave sees, as I rotate this model, Dave will see that model rotate. As I mark up this wall right here, Dave will see that wall getting marked up as a live review. This is a direct feature comparison to one of our competitors, and you know we do it better because we're doing it in the live Revit model or the DWG drawing. So we're doing the live review without having to create a PDF file. This segues into this thing right here, design markup 2D or 3D. Like I said, we are, our dominance inside of RVT and DWG, this is our differentiator from an Autodesk standpoint. We let you, you folks during design stages do design markup on these file formats. So when you're in fast design changes, why do you want to have, why do you want to create another file format just for the purposes of design review for your dedicated team if they're using team? Because now you can do issues and comments. You can have a, like a, a digital paper trail of your whole markup experience on these native file formats. And every time that you reload the next version, V2, V3, V4, the comments will stay on each of the versions so that you have a historical precedence as to why you made the decisions you did. That's awesome. And any, virtually any 3D format, because it just, you know, it's running the Navisworks engine in the background, that's a little bit of geek talk for you. And as far as the look and feel, it looks and feels the same on every device that you have. Um, so for this perspective here, let me jump into the other side of what's included. So c for r when you get c for r as a service, this is what's included with that order. So central file work sharing from the cloud. You get BIM 360 team. When you have one license of c for r it starts at 500 gigabytes. And when you add more licenses, so let's say times four, you can pool the data so that you will have two terabytes. So you're never going to run out of space is uh, moral of the story there. You get communicator. You get within team the idea of model management and versioning tools. And as an administrator, you can scale up the licensing. So you can activate a user one day and then be very much like Superman and deactivate them the next. So you can add or disconnect users as you see fit. And here's a little bit of payback for you. If you're a design office, and let's say that your billable rate is 100 bucks an hour to the client, and you break it down. I'm telling you right now, C for R is 800 bucks for the year. It's a discounted price. If you're billed out 100 bucks an hour, if C for R just saves you 10 minutes a week in model coordination, it will pay for itself, like within that year, easily. And you can use this across more than one project. It's not limited by scale like that. So. That's a huge savings because model coordination, saving things to cloud sites, doing FTP sites, it's just not worth it in the end, and this savings is actually very practical. So that's collaboration for Revit as far as the PowerPoint. Let's jump into it real time here. Here's what it looks like specifically in the environment of Revit. This file is in the cloud because you can see the little graphic here. This file is local to my desktop show you how easy it is to push this file up to the cloud. When you load c for r it installs an add-in to Revit. You will be able to go to the file open command, file open, and then browse your cloud projects. When you go to the link command, I want to link in additional files, you go insert link Revit file, and you'll browse to the, browse to the cloud. So the cloud is what is enabled inside of C4R when you get it. This file is a local, non, this is a non-centralized 
uh, file, or it is a centralized file, but in this case here, we're going to use this button right here, collaborate in the cloud. If you had work sets enabled or not, so central file or not, it doesn't matter because when it goes through this process, it will do this for you. So collaborate using the cloud. Select a project. Here are the four projects that I'm associated with in my firm. I have these four projects and this is part of the setup that needs to get done before you start launching collaboration for Revit. When you buy the licenses, your first order of process is to come into your browser. You're going to create a project. You can see my R2017 skyscape, skyscraper project. That's easy for me to say. This is my project. This is another project called Hospital. These are two brand new projects that I made for some other customers. This is my hub. This is the master hub site of 500 gigabytes where all these projects live. So I made this project name just by saying create project. When you do this, because you're logged into Revit up here, you will then see these projects right here. It's just that easy. Select the skyscraper. You can rename this to say March uh, 21st Steel. Initiate. This launches collaboration for Revit. This starts sending, in this case, this is a 30 megabyte file. It's pushing a full 30 megabytes up to the cloud. It's including the work sets, the default work sets that were made, or it'll create them on the fly. Once it's up in the cloud, you're going to see my name of my project change. Because once it starts changing it up in the cloud and it's done, it says, okay, Caesar wants to start working on this project now. So it starts downloading, you can see, saving the model to local cache, and it starts downloading it to my local machine, into my hidden folder directory. And we're done. So that was 30 megabytes up, 30 megabytes down. This is a live project in the cloud now. And the nice thing about this cloud environment is you, as the team driving Revit, get to show your project engineers and architects only the things that they need to see from this project on team. I sometimes don't want to share every sheet that I have made. For example, my footing plan, that one's finished. But my roof framing, my sections are not finished. So I would only want to share with my project engineer or architect the footing plan and maybe um, the second floor framing plan. I have this ability inside of Revit, this is a standard ability to publish. I want to publish certain things out of this model to team. This is almost like saying I want to create a print set in Revit, so you might be familiar with this. So if you want to give your team the ability to see the 3D model, you can say, yeah, I want to share the 3D working model, plus I want to share the footing plan and the second floor saving plan, uh, framing plan. These are the only things now that will publish out to your project team. Anybody that's using C for R will always see this entire central file. And because work sets are enabled, we can, we can make sure that some people work on some things and not. So we can very, be very discreet in um, who gets to work on what. But usually, I usually just link in architectural files. So I would link in a Revit architectural file rather than share my model with them. And they would do the same. They would prefer to link in my structural model rather than uh, use my model and, and define a work set for themselves. Okay? It's, it's, you've got two different ways to, to work on this. So the collaborate, that's the published setting. And then the manage cloud models is a second way that you can actually tell what version of the model that you're on, um, you could regress to an older model. So you can see within this project scra uh, skyscraper, I have a number of different models that I've been working on. There's the one I just made today. It's got a fantastic little check mark to say this is the latest version that was published at this day and time. We have an option, um, I think this one here, 
might have different versions. So this model, let's check out the versions of it. And yes, it does. We will keep track of the versions for you, just as we always have in Revit. You can keep as many versions as you wish, and you have the power to always restore past versions. So if somebody uh, really just planted this model right into the ground, you could always go back to the earlier model uh, previously saved. But you can see on these two models, I can also add comments. So versioning does not cost you any kind of data on your server. If it's a 100 meg model and you have 10 versions, it's still only going to be 100 megabytes used on your site, not, not uh, 100 times 10. Okay, so versioning, publishing, that's how this stuff gets up to a uh, team. And then the communicator, how do I chat inside of Revit? This is that communicator button that I was talking about. Communicator launches, it signs you in, and then from this point forward, anybody that's on this project right now will get to uh, chat with me specifically. So we can go into what are the chattings that are taking place, what are the projects to which there is chatting taking place or was chats taking place? So these are two different projects. And you can see on a project by project basis, you have the team members of that entire project. This is a big difference between any kind of Dropbox site or any other kind of site like that. You get to see who's on your project with you and you can chat with them outside of your own office. So when I jump into this project here, Audubon TS 2016, this is the way the chat window looks. And so the clipping, let's clip this peer right here, capture, uh, what about removing, and I can send this to like at Scott or at Dave um, so that they know the comment's going to be coming to them. That's the chatting window, and then the saving window is all about right here. How many times, who saved what project? This is all historical in nature as well. And this um, is where you can manage, manage the users. If you have four people working on the same file at the same time, you'll get to see who's been saving what when. And if the model got corrupt or if their changes were really serious in nature that needed to be reverted, you could find the date and time and then go back to the restore button and restore back just before you know, they put their dirty little fingers on it, let's say. So that is uh, a great look into the C for R side of it. Let's jump into team, because this is where the rubber really meets the road with the entire team overall. And don't forget to type in any questions, because I'm going to go for another five minutes here, and then we'll get into some Q&A. So team skyscraper hub, this hospital project. Let's look at it. There is a very simple view here, and this is simple as it is, there's a lot going on. Uh, first off, we've got the details of what's going on in this hospital project. We've got the project members over here. We have any activity, so we're in this project file, What's the activity going on in this, in this file folder? So this is the hospital uh, file folder. Here's all the activities. There's a DWG uploaded. Uh, this other guy um, uploaded this DWF, this RVT, RVT. Oh, Caesar updated and uploaded a document file and an Excel file. These two file formats can be viewed natively right through the browser. You don't need to download them and open up Word. You can view them right there. Um, and then you can update them. You have to update them in Word, of course, or Excel, but you can update them uh, or view them. Sorry, I'm speaking too fast. You can view them through Team, and you would update them through their native applications. So let's look at this view. This view is a list view. We can tile this out. When you tile it, you get a little bit more feedback visually. So I like this view particularly when it comes time to uh, deciding what the project looks like. So for example here, uh, this project is on version 4 and this is on version 1. So the, when I'm saying projects, these files, these are files within the project folder. So this 
file called hospital is on version 4. Let's dig into that. Now remember my publish setting when I said publish from Revit? When I published this file, I did not want to give access to anybody viewing it right now. I did not want to give access to the 3D file. So in this case, let's click overview. Let's see what this file is given access to. This file only has these four sheets associated to it. Yes, I could have had the model associated here too, but I chose not to because to me, my team, you know, my interior, my interiors uh, project director likes to work off of plans. They don't want models right now, they just want to work off of plans. So you could hold back the model and anybody now looking would never know the difference. But here's where they would go. They would look at this and say, oh, there has been comments. On version four, there have been five comments. And each comment's got a nice little thumbnail. And in version three, there are seven comments. And it's the same thing here. And this is the one that I really want to stop on. 17. Here's the comment. Here's the thread. Let's open that up just with a click. Now it's bringing into it the comments. It's bringing into it the red line markup, and it's also bringing in the file itself. It's the Revit sheet with the overlay. And uh, Caesar said, "Add the wall and door to the cor to the corridor. Add this wall and door, and move the exam room walls." Right? Anybody who's been in an architect's office knows this. And uh, the project manager said, "I approve this move." And then this other guy named Caesar says, okay, I'm going to do it. This is the Revit user, right? So this guy received it. He came to team. He opened it up. He stays on team, and he sees this. He opens up his Revit, and he does the move. So you open up these things in two separate windows. You have team running in one window. You have Revit running in another, and you add that wall. So Caesar went ahead, updated it, and he uploaded the new Revit file. There it is right there, it's version four. I'm the project manager, of course. I, there's lots of Caesars in my office, like that's not ever heard of. Um, let's compare the versions. So I'm project manager Caesar right now, and I wanna compare version four versus version three on the ground floor, and I wanna make sure that uh, um, this change was made, and it was done correctly. Now, this opens up a brand new window. It's going to use my taskbar to tell you that it's loading in a couple of different files, version three and version four, and it's doing a comparison. And this is the best thing since sliced bread. If you know Revit, this is it. These are buttons, and the comparison is at an object property level. When you say basic wall, basic wall, basic wall, these elements have been modified you can turn them off so that the visibility only shows those two things that were added. But when you turn this modification button on at an object level, you get to scrutinize some real data, not just visual, but real data. So for example, how much, you know, we move this wall to the right, how much square footage do we gain? Click on it. And it says, hey Caesar, you increased your area by 36 square meters. What was it? in version three. In version three, oh, it was back here, right? In version four, click, it was right there. So you can see the difference automatically at, a, at an object level, which is just the best things in sliced bread. So you can measure things up too to find out what's the dis different measurements. Um, so this object compare is fantastic, and it's at a discipline level too. So if you want to compare steel versus steel, um, you're all set to go. So we're pretty much uh, at quarter two. There is a lot more the team does that I'm not talking about right now. This live review, here it is right here. You would click on live review. It's going to bring the window up. It's going to start the live review session. Like I said, it's going to give you that hyperlink. 
that I can send to Dave and we can start talking about and marking up files. We can mark up 3D, 2D, doesn't matter. And it's the native Revit files, okay? So that's how the live review really starts to work.